Welcome back to Cyber Arena, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for game two of a best of three, Alliance versus Fnatic. Currently, Alliance leading this one, one to zero. Ben, it started off 6-1 in Fnatic's favor, and then the leading stage from there just fell apart. It was a disaster. I think the Slark kill, um, that wasn't good, and then it all came down to Roshan. So that Roshan fight, though, that completely changed the game around, turned the pace of the game. And I thought that Fnatic wasn't too behind, but the graft was like 2,000, 3,000 gold, even with S4's buyback. Yeah, that was... Uh that was a, just an amazing I think it was fight. And yeah. it, it goes back to, you know, we talked about it a lot in the pregame, was that Shadow Shaman, Roshan, Ward Trap. Yeah. A pair With most other heroes, you can't really force a team to go into the pit because right. you're taking damage, you're going to be vulnerable, but you're all at full HP when you do that trick. So it's a lot harder to contest the Rosh. Mm -hmm. And Sheeper was saying, like, they, you can actually see their screens. Like, if you look in this picture, right below their monitors, they have their screen on uh, the front of their desk. And you can actually see where what they're trying to ban. And she said that they actually had it hovered over the Shadow Shaman instead of the Tusk. And that would have completely changed the game. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you think the Tusk would have worked well in that game? Uh, I guess hard to say at this point. Not really? Yeah. I don't think so. That was maybe just Fnatic like, oh, we've seen this draft before. And they did Tusk last time. So let's yeah. just ban him. But Fnatic taking no chances this time will ban out Shadow Shaman very, very early on in the draft. Yeah, Shadow Shaman was removed. And... Uh, looking at the draft now, it's a Timber Song Crystal Maiden for Fnatic. The first pick of the game went to Fnatic. Uh, the Wisp was banned. That was the key question we had was, is there any chance Alliance lets it through? Zero chance in hell. And yeah. I, this is how you play Fnatic. Alchemist Wisp is probably the safest bans you're going to get, at least when Fnatic's first pick. This is how you play against Fnatic. You just don't give them Wisp. Make them beat you with something else. And last game, they could not do it. So Alliance, the reply, Ak Chen, uh, and Bulldog Clockwork. So this game, they get a hero that really suits Bulldog well. He wasn't bad on yeah. the Viper at all. He did his job. Yeah. But I would say, I would say Viper has like a very low skill cap though. It's it's a good hero. I wish there was a higher skill cap to the hero though. There's just not there's no room for like flashy plays with Viper. Yeah, I know. It, it seems it seems too rewarding for doing nothing. I think that's one of the things that irks me the most about Dota is when you can get a lot out of something without really doing anything. It's like rage. You have six seconds to just destroy somebody and you're magic immune. And yeah. Viper, you just take damage and you, you own their whole entire team. Yeah, or another great example is Alchemist Stun. Yeah. Channel, you can't you can't dodge it unless you phase shift. That's it. Yeah, good plays should be rewarded, not like medi mediocrity <laughs> or just like not really doing anything, right? This should be a meritocracy. Yeah. But it's not. It is not. I know. You well, know, ben, you know what? Positioning. Life's unfair and we're just learning it uh, through Dota now. So deal with it. Deal with it. Ban it if you don't like it. There's too many heroes to ban. And quit your bitching while you're at it. There's too many heroes to ban, though. <laughs> it's true, especially in this patch. You know, you only get those two bans early on. And, you know, if your first pick especially, uh, you're leaving everything you want in the pool. So it's, it's tough. And uh, in game one, it was the first pick team that prevailed. So mm -hmm. Alliance was, I believe it was Alliance saying that first pick seems a bit stronger now. Or was that Fnatic? Fnatic. Fnatic was well, I, I think most teams would agree yeah. that first pick is stronger. Yeah, and we'll have to see if that's the case here. Timber saw opening does match up pretty well against Clockwork. Uh, good against most heroes 1v1. Right. And we expect this to be Trixie's hero. I guess the main question is, is there any chance they go for like an aggressive tri-lane, or is he just guaranteed to be their offlaner? Fnatic rarely does aggressive yeah. tri-lanes. I, I, don't, I don't remember the last time I've seen him do that. It's been a long time. So that would put Trixie solo offlane, and uh, they need that secondary support. They need no tails here is the main thing. Enchantress banned out, not available for him. What would we see him go for here? Okay, mm. we, we've seen his legendary Sand King at, Dream, at Dream League. Visage is still in the pool. Visage is in the pool and very strong. He's probably the strongest support still left in the pool. Rubik's decent, uh, especially versus Clockwork if you want to aggro try, but Fnatic doesn't aggro try, so yeah, it's if, probably not happening. If he ever cogs you, you just throw him out of the cogs. And life stealer the choice once again for Alliance, so. Loda's signature hero, him and Havos, they just, as well as Era. I mean, for the 6.78 Era, it was the go-to right. carry hero. That's another hero that I think gets like a little, yeah, he's a little bit too rewarding. He's still a really good pick. Um, I, I think there's a little bit more skill with him, like raging at the right time to dodge, like stun well, now with the cast and point stuff. on Infest too, and the yeah. open wounds, it's like slightly but harder. But there's not that much right. skill involved with him. Um, he ain't no Shadow Fiend, that's for sure. <laughs> 
Fnatic, they banned out four, like, decent pushing heroes, too. So one big problem that we saw from Fnatic, they couldn't actually get towers, and Alliance did uh, when they got a kill or two. So I think banning these heroes is... It's okay, yep. although Alliance doesn't really use Pugna that much. Yeah, Fnatic is really worried about this early push. I mean, They're really worried about it. And that's four heroes that can push. Even Venomancer is not a bad pusher. He's probably the best support pusher besides Leshrac, I'd say. That's, that can actually sit in lane, not a jungler. As for Fnatic, looking at what's available, one hero that comes to mind for me is Mirana. Matches up well against Lifestealer, good against Clockwork, can't really be killed by a hook, mm -hmm. uh, and gives them... Not a reliable initiation, but you always have Moonlight Shadow to fall back on. Taxes the enemy. Is Era play Potom? Uh, I was even thinking like a support Potom, maybe. Support Potom, she's okay. CM, ooh, Naga. Oh boy. I like seeing a Naga. Well, Alliance, uh, they, they brought Naga back a bit in the Western scene the other day. I guess the picks are a little bit slow here, but yeah, Naga Siren, here it goes. Yeah. I like Naga a lot. She's all blue. She's probably one of my favorite heroes, and another one of my favorite heroes has just been picked. We should probably cast off of this so that we should. We're casting off of our in-game views. So okay. Sorry about that, guys. They do have to manually select the heroes here, but it is a silencer, Merlini. And a silencer fourth pick is very strange. Like he's gonna be there for the fifth pick. Nobody's yeah, he's gonna, gonna be there. He's <laughs> going to be there. I mean, maybe they want. Mm, I'm trying to think about who they're gonna pick mid that would synergize well with what they're trying to run right now. It's pretty much just a. Well balanced lineup right now. Silencer. I mean, I doubt we'll see it, but he can mid. Oh, yeah, he could mid. But uh, how does he match up against Naga? I have not seen that matchup. It's okay. Yeah. Naga spells are like, they're not super expensive, but they're like okay expensive. But the thing is, most people don't go curse build. They just go last word. Plus yeah, and just try to outlast hit you. But you can't really, you can't stop a Naga from CSing. It's just, it's like Dragonite. You just spam Riptide. Yeah. You'll and get last hits. Easy, easy gold. Yeah. So uh, probably a, I mean, hard to say. It could be a pot of port or solo mid. I would like to see a pot come out um, from Fnatic. Now, now with two setups. With Crystal Mana as well as Naga, I think it'd do... Actually, decently. three, because they have the Net, the Song, and the Frostbite. So, mm -hmm. a lot of ways to set up that arrow. It's pretty She's just such a well-rounded hero. Like, she's oh, yeah. She's, she's really good. They, they're really liking the Slark today. Ew. 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 Well, do you think Slark's going to be a better fit this game? Because you did not like him last game. And by mm -hmm. the way, this... Who's He's okay versus Clockwork, I'd say. He's decent. He's better against Clockwork than uh, Viper. Yeah. That's true. They have now, so this means an era slark. Uh, it'll be an offlane timber saw for Trixie. Mm -hmm. Solo, I guess solo mid naga for Hani, perhaps. Or do you I think don't support? think so. Support. It's not a, it's not a naga hero. It's not a Hani hero. Hani yeah. plays. He he has a very specific type of hero. It's like a, a yeah, snowball-y like farm intensive hero. Yeah, like storm invoker puck qua queen of pain. Yeah. yeah, storm spirit. He really likes storm spirit. Well, they ban out the od. Strong pick. Uh, and can trash any of these heroes 1v1, so smart ban. And, you know, the one thing for Alliance here is not really, when you go Silencer, especially if he's one of your supports, not a good hero to gank early, so they want to try and get rid of at least one uh, potential lane dominator, mm -hmm. since they can't punish that by ganking. Puck has been banned out from Fnatic, and S4's Puck is probably one of the scariest Pucks in the world. It really is. Time. Yeah, it's it's and it scary. synergizes super well with the life stealer and clockwork as yeah, well. Yeah, you, so. they could go storm. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that awkward silence when we see it picked, but it's not on the monitor yet. And we're like, well, they could go storm, but indeed they do go storm. I yeah. think I think I like this a little better than puck because it gives them more flexibility towards the late game. Puck doesn't really give you as much. Decent late, but Storm's going to do more. And Storm's really good versus Naga, too. They, they don't really have any lockdown for Storm at all. They don't have any stuns. Zero. Great pickoff lineup here from Alliance. I mean, all they really Minus have... Minus the Silencer. Electric Vortex. Five seconds remaining. Uh, they're really long-range initiation, though. Global, you can just jump somebody from anywhere. And uh, not... I mean, we're going to need to see some BKBs or like a Manta style, perhaps. And the last pick now comes out. The crowd claps, gets a little excited. It is a Shadow Fiend for Hani. Yeah, I think Slark is really the odd man out in this in this draft, though. Like, he doesn't synergize that well versus anything. He needs a lot of farm to be able to compete with Lifestealer. He gets owned by Global. So, I don't know. We'll see. What you going to do? We'll they, they, like, they like their Slark. Now, the one good thing, Shadow Fiend mid versus Storm. 
if you play it well, you can get a lot of farm out of this lane. And he's also on the radiant side, so he can the stack thing that. Is, stack even that if he gets a lot of farm, though, I I still fear for him. Right? They can they can still life steal or bomb him all the time until he gets BKB, and, and then, then it's you, the and then you global and just focus him down too. Yeah. So I don't know. It, they, that's where the song of the siren also comes into play, though. They do have another get out of jail free card. Mm -hmm. But do Fnatic get those early levels on their supports? Last game after a great start, they they seem starved for levels later on. Yeah, their supports got a lot of kills, but didn't too, do too much after that. And I just find it really hard for Fnatic to counter that initiation from Alliance. The Nake Spawn with Global or Hook Shot into a Global, that's going to be like instant at least one hero dead, probably two starting off the fight. Well, with that being said, Merlini, it's time for game two of a best of three. Fnatic versus Alliance. Fnatic on the Radiant side. We'll introduce them now. No Tail will be handling your Naga Siren. We have Era on the Slark. Once again, reprising that role, Fly will be on the Crystal Maiden this time around. Hani, your Shadow Fiend, your Swagger Fiend, your Shadow Friend, if you will. And that leaves Trixie as the Safe Lane Timbersaw. And on Alliance, our... 1-0 team right now in this current best of three. We have Loda on the safe lane lifestealer, EGM on the support silencer. Uh, we see S4 on the solo mid storm spirit. Aki heading to the jungle on that Chen and Admiral Bulldog on one of his more fantastic heroes, Clockwork. Yeah, if he's not playing a farmer, it's pretty much Clockwork is like the hero you'd most like to have him on. And he did really well in the Viper last game. Let's give him credit. He's had some decent Elder Titan games. It's not that he can't play other heroes. It's just that we like to see him on his signatures. But here we go. Fly now. He'll wait for the zero-minute rune. And both teams will descend for it. Ake with one early smoke. I think that there's a lot of pressure on... Oof. Uh oh Got to be careful here. I think there's a lot of pressure on Fly and No-Tail um, to get a lot of work done early. Because I think if you just let Alliance play passively and farm up on Storm Spirit as well as Livestealer, uh, the farm on Shadow Fiend and Slark won't be able to compete, at least in terms of gank, gank power. I still think they're going to die. So I think the pressure is, again, on Fnatic to get a lot of kills early on the weak defensively Storm Spirit, at least before level 6, and, and try and limit Lifestealer's farm. And they're going to look to do it. You mentioned Fnatic, not often do we see them go aggressive tri-lane, but oh, yeah. here they are, wow. aggressive tri-lane. They nope. had to shut down Loda though. Loda just got ex just way out of control last game. They're going to go on him now. There's your ensnare to start things off. And the right clicks commence. He rages and looks to run. There is a frostbite available, but won't be in range. No, just gets it. Just gets it. Could be the first blood. A few more right clicks. Just a few more. Slap him. They get him. Era Very nicely delivers. played. And the crowd goes nuts. Very nicely played. Era actually had level 1 essence shift too. I think if he had pounce, it would have been a much cleaner kill. But... They're making the Slark pick work, shutting down Lotus Farm. Here comes Aki already, and the instant frostbite on that Dark Curve Summoner. But manages to steal for a bulk. Aki just has, kill. He just has no hesitation about helping out tri lanes. I would say out of you, like, you have to do that with yeah. Chen. If you lose the early game with Chen, you're going to lose the game, most likely. He, he's definitely one of the most aggressive supports in terms of like if he needs to come out of the jungle and help his lane, he will. I mean, if you give Aki the space, he'll happily sit back and farm, but. He's not able to do a whole lot here. Having a Crystal Maiden really negates that Chen's effectiveness at this early stage of the game. S4 looks like he's handling Hani pretty well in mid, doubling up his CS and last hits and denies uh, almost both of them. And on the bottom lane, Bulldog versus Trixie. We see Bulldog not doing very well. 7-0 compared to 11 from Trixie, but he's now at his tower, so should be able to get some hits there. So far, Fnatic, they're actually the ones jungling here. <laughs> It's the Chen who's just running for his life. He's being somewhat bullied out of his own jungle. He'll rotate back to the safe big camp. Uh, meanwhile, middle lane could be a kill from Hani. He's almost got mana here for the, the C-Ray. He's not going to get it off in time. Ooh, that was close. Almost got S4 there. But now S4 is bottle, so what could have been a kill is now, I mean, virtually negated. The good thing for Hani, though, already 10-2. and two, So he's CSing really well in a, a fairly tough matchup at the early levels. Mm-hmm. Storm is pretty good base damage early on. He actually doesn't have any pull either. He went a one or a one one two build, or at level three he didn't have any pull. Top lane, are they gonna dive? They found EGM from long range. They'll grab him and snare him up and bring him down with ease. Support silencer. He just does not do that much in lane. I like. He's I such don't know. A, he's such a greedy support. Like you need he's to very get to the support. mid game, and I mean it could come back to really help them later on because you just global and then lifestealer bomb in. 
and completely turn a fight. It's a very powerful combo, but I think he's a very good hero. He just needs to be in a, put in a situation where he can shine. And right, like if, if you know they're not going to go aggressive, for example. Yeah, and definitely not in a two v three situation. In a three on three, I think he's okay, but two on three, just not a chance. Looking at the other lanes, Trixie in his one v one bottom, seventeen and one, but Bulldog keeping the pace nicely with sixteen and zero there. So middle lane looks fairly even overall. Uh, Hani slightly behind on CS, but it's not a big deal. So both solo matchups pretty even. So really this tri lane has been the story of the game so far. Yep, Aki has smoked up looking for a kill, but No Tail might actually reveal the smoke. Yep, it did. And Nicely done. Now SF knows what's up. And he's going to start stacking Ancients here as well. Shadow Fiend not really good at clearing these early on, but later on they can definitely use the income. Yep, here they go. Hani is actually stacking the other camp too. Stacking the big camp. And no tail checking the top rune. Aki just has not been very active. He's been trying to help out the lane, but as soon as he sends a creep, it just gets frostbitten. And this is one of the like many reasons why Crystal Maid has yeah. just been a go-to support pick. That's one of the heroes I would like to. See, one of the skills I would like to see reworked a little bit is frostbite on creeps. It's just a little bit too strong. Era, dark pact, and will remove the silence there. Should be fine. Now the turnaround comes. EGM another net. Could be another kill. No leap available, but Dark Pack, it's just too much damage. This silencer's just food. Now Loda, he's got some backup here from a Centaur. It'll stomp, it connects only on No-Tail. Era, still right-clicking, but a rocket, a well-time one from Bulldog. Oh boy, he turns wow, around. Wow, that rocket. Man, he's, level three rocket. He's maxing rocket as well. Oh, I mean, if you're getting good CS, I mean, you can't get a kill on a, t on a Timberzar, right? Yeah. You, don't, you don't see this build very often in Western Dota. It just owned the crap out of Fnatic's tri lane, though. That just totally changed things around. And I feel like it's something Fnatic probably did not expect. I mean... You don't expect that. Yeah, you don't know. It's Especially like from the off lane. Maybe a mid clock you view, but not that. I mean, maybe they've seen the level 3 rocket bottom once or twice, but you know, it's still early, and oftentimes you're not even going to see a clockwork use battery assault unless he has a kill opportunity, which he did not hear. So they get caught with their pants down in Fnatic after a great start. They tried to go on Loda, it looks like, but He'll infest an enemy creep, pops back out, and he is still farming reasonably well, considering the pressure he's been under. Yep, Shadow Fiend farming up the triple stack. This feels more like what I'm used to seeing from Alliance and Fnatic. Slightly more greedy drafts, slightly less aggression early on. It is 3-2, to two, but you can see how these teams could very easily transition into a far more in the mid game. Mm -hmm. And who wins out in the far more? I, I mean, I said Alliance before the game. But if Fnatic, I guess, is really, really good at stacking, that Hani can get out of control. It's just really hard to play late game against Lifestealer Bombs and Clockwork Silencer because their ability to get pickoffs is pretty yeah, much it's infinite. A, it's a way better than Fnatic's. And now they'll go on Loda top lane again. He doesn't have Infest here, but Loda's a bit too tanky. Not really the hero you want to initiate on. They really want to catch the Silencer or maybe the Chen, but speaking of the Chen, he's rotating out towards mid. The good news that continues to be positive here for that Team uh, Fnatic is Ake has still been shut down a lot. Level 3 at 6 minutes. Well, in. and Honey's, Honey's gotten a lot of farm too. Yeah, S4 actually witty in terms of CS, but this is with the threat of the Chen there as well. And now just constantly stacking, farming the jungle, bottling up, bottle crowing. And if they don't put pressure on him, he'll have a BKB by like that 15 minute mark or so. Yep, and Clockwork it was missing off the map, so he could not farm mid safely. We'll do a little damage to Loda here. A chip. Chipping away at his HP, but not really able to commit to the fight. And now we see Loda level 6, or sorry, Bulldog, level 6 with a TP scroll. This is where things get dicey for Fnatic. The tri lane went well, but now the supports level 4 and Crystal Maiden and Naga good, but they're not level 6. So if this clockwork rotates, Oh, they could Aki die. gets caught out. Oh, he was trying to save his creep right there. But Bulldog's coming though. He just TP'd in for this. Now he's going to hook in from downtown. Finds Fly. Gets the kill. Nicely done. Plus two in for EGM. Big thanks to Roman for bringing me water because I did not have any. But meanwhile, middle lane, Hani uh, will get caught out here. And now on the run, does S4 have the damage to complete the kill? He does not. If, if S4 didn't have, if there wasn't backup there for Hani, he could have gone for that. If Storm jumped there, he would have died too. Yeah, no, if, he, if there was no backup, he could have gone for it. Yeah. But with two there, he would have. And fed. they have a ward up there to, to tell how much backup he has. Yeah, Alliance continue to impress with their ward game. Yeah, the warding is so important. Well, they had that one ward that wasn't good for them in the early game. But aside from that, it's been really good. 
Now we transition. I mean, it's not in the mid game yet, but we're getting to that point where it's basically an arms race. How quickly can uh, they get some farm and levels on the Chen, like level six or seven? Maybe the Arcane Boots work towards a mech. How soon can they get global for Alliance? Uh, and then once they have those abilities, you expect to see them go for the next level of aggression. Global, go for a pickoff, transition into a tower. Meanwhile, for Fnatic, how soon do they get the BKB? Do they manage to pick up a level 6 on Naga? A lot of key levels and items still out there for both teams to obtain, and all of these could be game-changing. Yep, looking at the gold graph right now, just slightly in favor of Fnatic, mostly due to the stacking. Um, of the big camp by Honey and Company. No oh, tail. Oh, they went for the snipe here. They're going to die for it. S4, I don't know if that's worth it, but he will get the kill. It was, and he zips out. Great mana management there. I actually thought he didn't have enough, but with the stick charges, just enough to get up to the high ground. And they're using this Clockwork Rocket really well. Clockwork Rocket, and it's just that top era. Oh, they're going to catch out era now, and body block could be there from EGM. Enter God Mode. I think it's enough. It is. That was game. a really nice play from EGM, but he's going to pay with it for his life, but definitely worth it for him. The Slark pick uh, it had a great early start, but we could see where it struggles here in the mid game. There's a lot of just burst damage to bring him down. And that is one thing to be said about Silencer. His last word does a lot of damage, especially when you max it, and it's nearly maxed. Yeah, he like stood in front of him so he couldn't pounce away. Yeah, like that was ridiculous. Body blocked him, blocked the pounce. There was just nowhere to go. Yeah, EGM and on he's, that he's, support play. And I like how he's he's rotates bottom. They want to get his level six because once he has six, then you can just life stealer bomb hook in and global and pretty much secure a guaranteed kill on anyone. Yeah, looks and like Naga Song is not going to bail you out though if he stays out for way too long. I jinxed him last game. Will I jinx him again? That game sense. No, EGM don't get caught like that. But for Fnatic, I mean, the key thing, I, it's still the Hani BKB that really stands out to me. Once they have that, much harder for Alliance to take the fights. Mm -hmm. And even if they global him, they're not really going to be able to damage him for, through the mid game until they get some items on Loda, who, as of yet, is fairly poor. They ping out Loda on top, takes a little bit of damage from Timbersaw, but just going to run away to look, safety. Look at this aggression from S4. He knows what Hani's up to. Farming the big camp and trying to punish it here, but Hani with some great game sense. We'll dodge that one. E EGM dropping low bottom lane, but they can't get the kill. And now the turnaround. Here comes the zip, the pull, the kill. Easy. Too easy for S4. The, the pickoff potential of this team, and it's not even fully online yet. They just now got global silence. We haven't seen an infest bomb yet. They don't have the global heal, although they're about to get it. Alliance's mid game is really looking scary right now for Fnatic. It's kind of oh, hook shot. Battery assault's there. The global, now it's available. Trixie will fall. It's a, a wow. global, it's a kill. Really nice coordination from Alliance. And yeah, they're making the Silencer pick work. Yeah, sure, he fed early, but now he's level 6, and he has a little bit of intelligence under his belt. Actually, a lot already. 6 intelligence, only 11 minutes in. He's sitting at 1, 3, and 4. Those 4 assists really adding up. S4 still playing around in the opponent's jungle, knowing what Hani's up to. I love this just constant aggression on the Hani. I mean, Hani's doing a fantastic job, though. He is not... He's not died yet this game, despite all the pressure. Well, they've been protecting him really hard, too. They have a Sentry Ward in mid to make sure that they don't have vision of him. Uh, they have a Zipper Ward on bottom in case they approach from there. So they've been putting all their eggs in one basket. Slark, in the meantime, same story as last game. Like... He was doing okay in lane, but he's falling really far behind. He, he just can't pick up any major item. S4, bottom lane. He isn't... He's not farming that much. I mean, he is putting the pressure on Shadow Fiend, but he has slowed down quite a bit. A 2-0-0 zero and, zero and decent CS, but he will quickly fall behind if he's not taking creeps. And right now, waiting for the 12-minute rune. Unfortunately for him, it's an illusion. Not the ideal rune, but he'll take what he can get here. Who do you think this favors, Ben? It's it's pretty even in terms of gold I still, I and still experience. I think Alliance, because their gank is better. Yeah, I, I their pick all because Global's coming up in a minute, and they'll just do it again. And you know, right. even if Fnatic have Naga in the right position, that's not going to help you if this Global comes out at the right time. Right. Normally, you have Naga, and you can punish these kinds of dives. She's like a great hero to counter life stealer bombs, but Silencer perhaps the counter to the Naga pick. It's mm. cool. It's cool. We'll see now. And for Alliance, the, the farm isn't really there on S4 to this point. Decent so far, but needs to get the Orchid out fairly soon. And nobody really getting huge items yet. They're going for Trixie again. If he shows up for that creep. 
Nope. Won't take the bait. Don't do it, Trixie. Don't do it, my friend. He won't do it. EGM farming bottom by himself. He may get caught out by Naga. This is where one team, like if this was a, a Fnatic hero support, that hero just would have gotten jumped and killed. But the silencer is, there's no great initiation on Fnatic. No long range pickoff. I mean, maybe a timber chain into a shock room, but maybe they burn asleep, but he's not even level six yet. Yeah, still not level six. Meanwhile, top lane, they found Trixie. They will bring him down. Just caught the tail end, but meanwhile, on the bottom oh, lane. Oh, the global TP, too strong. Wow, four, five heroes were, sorry, four heroes bottom. They get the kill top, they get out safely, and now the life are bomb. The turnaround straight on the fly they go. Now the net on the Loda, a Requiem from Hani doing very little damage here. Now the raises, that's hurting. Loda standing strong for now, an alliance. Marching forward, not quite enough mana to go. Fly low, but not dead, and will barely survive. But man, that global, EGM dodging a four hero gank. Yeah. The lack of stuns just killing Fnatic right now. Loda and S4 actually weren't focusing on the same target there. They can't stop him from globaling. Like, even if you frostbite him or net him, you could still global and then just TP out. They have no way to stop that except bursting him down. They need more right click. You need stuns on your supports. A wise man. Loda was very, very patient from his uh, rage there, too. There is a timber chain available, but no way is Trixie going that deep. And now it's Ake split pushing. <laughs> He's got the two satyrs up top, along with a Hellbear Smasher. And we haven't seen much of Aki all game. He's been catching up nicely, though. 1,300 gold. Mech is... It's not going to be a fast mech, but after that really slow start, he's starting to get to that point where he can have a big impact. Here comes S4. Diving top lane. There's still no level 6 on No-Tail. Oh, poor No-Tail. He'll go down. Now fly next in line. They need, they need that silence. This is just killing them at this point. It's getting ugly. It is. I thought Fnatic... I mean, the way the first game started... Might just run away with this series. I did not see this coming. They can still come back here, but it's it's hard against the Lions. Because I feel like for Lions, it's like every minute to three minutes, they have like a guaranteed kill or two. Mm -hmm. You global, or whenever the hook shots off cooldown, whenever you have a lifestealer bomb ready, you just get a kill. Yep, and the support kills. still aren't level six. And they're, like, of them. they're pretty much guaranteed. Right? Yeah. So Fnatic has to do something in the other times of the game, when those abilities are on cooldown, when they can't use them, but... They just have, it's hard to connect. Alliance are very hard to get kills against. Tanky heroes, uh, they, a lot of them can just TP out. Only the Naga and Snare to stop the Lifestealer from doing it. And once again, it's Alliance setting the tempo. Global's online and right like clockwork, they parade up the river. They wrap around towards bottom and they look for Era and No-Tail. Will or they find are they going them? mid? No, they're heading mid. And they've got Global here. Is there a song? There is finally a song, but it's No-Tail bottom lane. No TP scroll. This could be really bad. No Naga for this fight. Hani, no BKB yet. Really bad time to take a fight if you're Fnatic. Don't want to get caught here, but might. There's the zip. Now the silence. Perfectly timed. Good chain stun here. They'll bring Trixie down. They hook and they go for more. They found Hani. They pull him into the cogs. They'll bring him down fast. Bulldog will fall, though. I believe. Maybe not. Juggling the tower aggro. Not able to do it. Goes down. Make it a three for two. But they got two cores there. And they only lost a, a support hero and a clockwork. Big win once again for the Alliance. Very important hook from Clockwork too, catching out Hani right before his BKB. And not having the Naga TP, I mean, I don't know if it matters because of Global. Even if she TPs, she can't do anything. Yep. I, it's hard right now. They need four staffs. This Global is just owning. It really is. I mean, we were, I was very questioning of the, we were both, you know, wondering if the pick would work, especially the way the lanes develop, but. But they, they just, I mean, yeah, they didn't the do enough after bomb? those first few kills. That they just that, well, that's the same problem as they had the first game. Yeah. They just didn't get anything out, anything really out of the kills. Like, they didn't get huge farm up on Era. They created space for Hani, I suppose. I'm still feeling like I don't understand the Slark pick. I don't either. It doesn't seem to be doing much. And I guess the, the linchpin here for Fnatic has to be the BKB for Hani. It's coming soon. And at that point, if Alliance force a fight, they could really run into trouble. But... Alliance don't have to take fights. Fnatic can't force them into one. Like, if they five-man, you could split push and then just pick somebody off when they... Well, they can initiate with Song of the Siren. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they don't have any stuns to follow that up. Storm can zip away. Lifestealer can rage TP out, aside from Ensnare, perhaps. They have the Chen heal and send back. Like, it's these are not guaranteed kills, even with the Sun initiation. Yeah. It's At least it feels that way. Pretty much an Ensnare focus 
on somebody, but I don't really know who it's going to be on. Clockwork has his blade mail already. Life Stealer can just infest if he gets uh, netted. So Very just and they can just global too. S4 gets pounced upon, but no harm, no fail. Yeah, and Frostbite not the best spell to have against Storm at this stage of the game. He just zips right out of that. It's tough, and now the Orchid's coming, and so it's just it'll be another way to find these kills. They do jump on him bottom lane, but S4 dodging the leap. Era slightly off the mark once again, just unable to connect on these leaps. But even if even if he catches the Storm there, he can just zip right out of yeah, it. Doesn't doesn't really matter. Now Fnatic, five heroes grouped up bottom. I believe a smoke is coming. No, it's the BKB. This is the crucial item for them to try and take the team fights. But will they find a team fight? Will Alliance get caught? There's always the global to bail them out. There's always just say, let's not take the fight. And now a big team fight item. The mech for Ake. Here comes Fnatic. They'll take a tier one. This is a high point for them with the BKB out. A good time for them to take those fights, but... I think Alliance recognizing that, just they'll farm for their next items. They'll get the Basher online. Immediately, as Roche. soon as Trixie TP's left side, they could do a Roche too. So, I mean, and Fnatic they, just can't stop this. If they try to walk in and Song here, they're just going to get globaled, and that Naga's just going to die without even getting to use Song. And they're not in position anyway, like you said, because of Trixie's TP. So, Alliance, just great game sense once again. They have a uh, Naga Illusion sending it in, though. They know that it can Riptide it. steal the Aegis? Nope. <laughs> Riptide doesn't hit Roshan, unfortunately. Okay. okay. I don't know why. It should. Like Acid Spray does. Yeah. That's because Alchemist is OP. Here oh, comes the song. They're going to go for it now. No tail jumping in. They've got a Requiem. A BKB available. Will it be popped? No Requiem being channeled yet. He gets silenced now. He's waiting for the global. Great patience from Hani. Just baiting it out. But now gets focused down. Right click down through the BKB. He does nothing in this fight. And now falls. Trixie on the way out. He'll try to bring down the storm, but he's getting juked a bit. Kited as well. And now cogged up. Probably brought down S4, the magician. He lives forever. Houdini cannot be killed this easily. And Trixie, he throws out a shock remote. Get him on the way out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As for trying to be a little too fancy for his own good, but I mean, Hani really patient, waits for the global to BKB, and then still just gets focused down anyway by the 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 Dark Troll Warlord and Snare. Yep. And they need to clean up Roshan. It's still at very very low HP. That's a really bad sign. Like it seemed like the BKB was the item they were waiting for, and they got it, and it didn't do anything for them. Yeah, it's it's really unfortunate for them, especially once Life Stealer gets even more items. Oh, Adderall Bulldog gets caught out. Yeah, this maybe the prey that Fnatic's been looking for. Oh, try to send it back, but not able to do so in time. And it will be a one for one in the end. Now Loda going ham. He doesn't have a rage or an open wound, so they will retreat out. But once again, just an even trade for Fnatic, not a winning trade. And now they go right back to Rose. This time they don't have global, but also there's no song. And Shadow Fiend doesn't have souls, so really Fnatic can't fight this. Yep. Another easy Roche. I mean, yeah, he he spent 20 minutes trying to farm his BKB on Shadow Fiend, it, but it just hasn't equated that much. He was 0-0-0 zero, 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 uh, going pretty deep into the game. I think Shadow Fiend isn't a hard farmer like that as a mid. You can kill a lot of people with that uh, 900 from Shadow Race. Trixie gets Orc did. Gonna die. And w such a good item to have against uh, Timbersaw. Orchid really ruins his day. And another easy kill. And this is what we were talking about with the Lions of Draft. Like, if they get through the laning stage, they always just have the easy pickoffs every time the Orchid's up, the Infest is online, the Global's online. They just have so many tools to pick off now that they can pretty much always be threatening a gank, whether or not they're going for it. And as a result, Fnatic on the back foot in terms of map control, on the back foot in terms of momentum, and not having the Aegis, they can't, like, farm to make up for it. Yeah, Fnatic just trying to find a way to get back into the game right now. Slark still a little bit under farm. He is number five on net worth. He's below Admiral Bulldog right now. Below the clockwork even. And this is, I mean, it's not really their one position this game, but I don't know what the Slark's job is this game because he's not doing much damage. Yeah, he's, he's not, not farming. He's he, not killing people. He doesn't, like, actually kill anybody because, you know, the leap's not going to do much. But hold that thought. S4 jumping in. And Arrow on the run. He's still got an ult available. Might need to use it soon. No, he'll be okay. What's the... I mean, they need to find a way to, to get the Slark involved, I feel. But I don't know what that way is. I mean, he was, like, somewhat involved in the tri-lane. Oh, uh, Loda gets caught out. This could be big. He doesn't have Infest, but he rages and just tanks through it. Infest cooling down soon. Drums are there. Seven seconds. Fogs, Jukes, gets a heal. Still alive, but Alliance continuing. 
Well, Fnatic continue to give chase, but they can't bring Loda down. The hook from Bullock might turn it around. Maybe not. Hani unwinding the Requiem. He'll bring him down. It is a one for one, but Loda back in. This time he's got the Infest. He infests and then pops right back out. Very low. Fnatic just song TP out. One for one in the end. Not a bad trade. for Honestly, for Fnatic, they'll take it. Yep. Yes, they will. But not like a huge win. They're not killing carries here. And they're not getting any towers out of it either. Yeah. They I only got one tower last game. This tower, or this game, only one tower too. You know, it seems like that's the biggest problem with their drafts, is their drafts don't transition into pushes that well. None of these heroes, like, Alliance has been picking. We saw Chen, Enchantress. Uh, who else did we see in the first game? Some other decent pushing heroes, I believe. Man, my brain is like a sieve today, Ben, I'll Shen, tell you. Shen, Enchantress, Viper. Viper's a pretty decent pusher as well. Well, the early mech. Yeah, the early mech. And Nick, uh, the Nether Toxin does work on towers at or 50%, so helps you finish them anyway. But, yeah, here they are now. Fnatic really struggling to snowball. And S4's lurking, waiting for Hani. No, nope, he'll just zip out. They can't punish this. Like, imagine if they had Global, imagine if they had, like, a Disruptor, a Skyrath, some kind of Silence or Lockdown, a Dragon Knight with a Shadow Blade. They just... A lot of these heroes would be great to deal with the Storm, but they have nothing to punish the Storm pick. Yeah, they they really don't. And they can't really punish Lifestealer either. He's number one on net worth by a pretty large margin, considering how much Hani's been farming this game. And now, Fnatic just backing off while we see S4 strut up into the enemy jungle. There is a gem on No-Tail. And he sees him, and it's like, well, what can we do? He's got Aegis, he's got his ult anyway, and he'll always be able to zip out. Loda has a Bastion now, too, so now Hani's screwed. Yeah, life this is where it gets really hard for Shadow Fiend. Like, to deal with an ab a Lifestealer, Basher, Abyssal Blade, you really need Manta, maybe Butterfly. Both. Yeah, probably both. Open Wounds out of the, the or sorry, uh, Manta out of the Open Wounds, and then evade some of those Bashes. But even then, he could still Abyssal you, and if you don't get lucky with the procs, you're dead anyway. Not a great late game matchup in general. And now S4 is getting a little bit out of control too. We see a BKB on Slark, but as we saw for the BKB on Shadow Fiend, it just doesn't really do that much. He's kind of forced to get it though, because there's so much damage. Fnatic just trying to go for the trade here, but Alliance, they're not giving trades. They've got a Lifestealer bomb, they TP in mid, and they start marching forward. The Coke was there, the pickoff comes, but no, they zip way past it, going for no tail. They don't want a song to counter this initiation. Now it's Hani on the run. The net already used. They've got a zip here. I don't know if it's quite enough. He gets off the slow. Now doesn't even need the vortex, just magic sticking up. One more zip, pops him like a pinata. Down she goes, now on the fly, another kill. Alliance are rolling to victory, 22 to 12. And can you believe game one started as bad as it did for them? It feels like ages ago. I mean, Loda got first blooded too this game. It wasn't an easy ride either. It's it's like slightly reminding me of LGD back in 6.78 where they'd like lose the lanes and then just crush the game anyway. But Alliance doing it with a very different style. They're doing it with a lot of pickoffs, a lot of early pressure. Uh, and it's working well for them now. Yeah, Fnatic's lineup just seems very disconnected. Yeah, discombobulated a bit. Discombobulated, yeah. It, it just there's like, something lacking. Like they don't have they don't have the initiator. That's it feels like that, and that's where the Slark comes in. He just he Silent is clockwork. typically good initiation, especially if you have BKB Shadow Fiend, but not versus the Alliance's lineup, not yeah. versus the Global, not versus the Clockwork, not versus the Life Stealer and the Storm. And Alliance are just doing the better job of getting the the initiation. Not only do they have a good matchup, but like that last fight, S4 goes past the Shadow Fiend, straight onto the Naga, silences her, and pulls her back, gets that kill, where a lot of players would have just said, let's just settle for the, the easy kill on the Shadow Fiend here. His target selection is really good, Yeah, too. Very patient and just like deliberate decision making from S4, and two games in a row now, and oh, by the way, 4k gold up on him. Only. F Fnatic are really backed into a corner. I just don't, they, d they don't have any great comeback heroes. I mean, Shadow Fiend's good if you can farm your jungle, but... He can't. It's not safe. Not versus Alliance. Yeah. Uh, so did Alliance get heavily outdrafted here? Or just a little outdrafted? Or not outdrafted at all and just completely outplayed? Uh, Fnatic, you mean? Yeah. I yeah, Fnatic. I think Alliance just had their number. They saw the Naga pick and they went straight for Silencer. And Silencer has really been the bane of the Naga's existence this game. Like, not only has no tail, sometimes he just hasn't been in the right position. But even when he is, he just global, you're useless. And Orchid. And, and Orchid as well. So I feel like this this pocket silencer pick is really the X factor for Alliance and you know again like we've been talking about the he Slark. He should be used more. That hero's own inch. I'm telling you. 
it's funny because when the laning stage was developing, you're like, oh, this hero can't do anything in the he, he can't do anything yeah, as, a, as a support, but in team fights, he is how so quickly, good. How quickly you change your tune, Ben. Oh, I told you, he's one of my favorite heroes. You're a flip-flopper. He's one of my favorite heroes, just not in the support two-on-three situation. Well, you're not, you're not EGM. I'm not EGM. Here comes your infest bomb from S4. Ready to leap and... The Aegis, uh, want to do a quick check, but probably now is not the time. He drops a remnant here, not going to leap. Aegis uh, sitting on... Oh, no, sorry, it did expire. What am I talking about? They have Abyssal Blade on Lodo now, by the way. Soul Booster and the big zip in. They go on arrow, but he does Dark Pact in time. And they Infest Bomb on an Illusion, so... Not the best initiation. They still have Abyssal Blade available. And do they even need a good initiation? Seems like they would just want to try and right-click this tower down. Now... They'll focus the Lysteer while he's raged, but the Ensnare not available. Loda just able to hightail it out of there. Now the fight could turn. Requiem unwound. Perfectly chained stun. Oy, oy, oy. A lot of damage. Now Loda isolated. Can they bring him down in time here? He's got the Abyssal Blade. He's low. Will he fall? Four step back to safety. Kept alive for now. He's still standing, and the turnaround might be coming. Wow, that was an amazing song. No tail. Hani, great teamwork there. Really turning the tide to this fight, and they might get some kills off of it. Aki low. Aki will fall. Fnatic storming back. Fantastic teamwork from these longtime teammates. Man, That's that was about as good an initiation perfect. as you're going to get, too. Unfortunately, he did not have the ensnare up. If they had an ensnare up, it would have been, I think, a lot, a, a lot uh, different of a fight. Lifesteer also had the gem, too, so he's a really high, high uh, priority kill. The idea was there, though, because he songed and then they started focusing the lifestealer, but they just didn't have the ensnare. But that is one way they can punish the pick, potentially. But hold that thought. There is a hook shot available. Axe yeah. is up. That was only because the Lions got the really bad initiation. Oh, this is a illusion. dead Shadow Fiend. Hani, wrong oh, neighborhood, boy. brother. He's going to get caught out. Abyssal Blade, one second until it cools down. Hook shot's there. Bulldog slams it home. Now the Abyssal coming through. They'll get the kill. And now they look for more. They sip. They jump on Trixie. S4 ganging up on him. It's not a fair fight, but Fly turns it around with a nice ultimate. Era finding the Bulldog kill on the sideline. Now another, another zip forward. They go into no tail. They get that kill, too. Make it a two for one. They they got a kill with the Slark at least on the sides, but they're not killing this. They're not killing the core heroes here. The Life Stealer's not dying. The Storm's not dying. And Shadowfiend. And is they are dying. ungodly farmed at this point. Yeah, just look at that net worth. Roshan's up now. Roshan number two, and Storm Spirit has a Bloodstone as well as an as an Orchid. And how do you kill him? And even you don't if, have any stuns. And even if you do, at some point he's just gonna bots right back into the fight with like a zero second respawn. If he 10 1 and 7 on S4, by the way. Wow. They, they they just can't kill him. Yeah. They need a hex or something. Like They needed a hex. Should Eric I mean, Shadow for a Fiend, hex? Shadow Fiend has built a uh, hex before. But he he's also their main damage this game. So. Well, I mean, does it come back to the Slark pick? Him just being not very useful. Maybe at he all? builds the hex? I guess so. I don't think he's going to be able to farm it, though. Slark's yeah. not a good farmer. He's okay. Yeah, he's not great. I mean, if you focus S4, though, you're going to lose the fight. Because you'll get hookshot. Now you'll, you'll definitely lose it. He's got Aegis. You get hookshot, globaled, and then you'll just lose the fight from there. So, like, again, Elias is going to get the jump off Fnatic, like, on almost every single one of these fights. The one fight they didn't was that great fight mid. Just Alliance messed up their infest bomb. They went right. on an illusion. And it only, it only worked for Fnatic because Alliance didn't find a real hero. If that was the real Naga, they just kill the Naga and take Rex. Yep. So, Fnatic really reliant on Alliance's mistakes, it feels, at this stage of the game. That's about all you can hope for. Well, will Alliance make any more mistakes? It remains to be seen. 32 minutes in. They're pushing. Probably just want to siege here with the Lifestealer. And I, I almost want to say Lotus should not be using Rage. You know, because it means he can get isolated and focused. Because of the Naga net and Song combo. But we'll see if they look to use it. For now, Alliance just... Kind of meandering towards the base, not really committing just yet. Maybe looking to jump. There's a global ready if they want to pop it. Not going just yet, though. S4 will push in through the bottom, and four heroes parked mid. No infest bomb yet, but Loda... Well, he wanted to hightail it towards S4, but he was spotted by a creep. Now he backs off. He'll come towards him again. They'll head towards the bottom lane. They say this is the right way to go. They'll zip onto the high ground just to clear it. Scout it out. Nobody there in Fnatic. Continue to defend. They need that perfect combination. The song, there's a smoke still on no-tail. The only one still smoked. The song into the Requiem. There's no glyph anymore. It's just been popped now. 
And Alliance continue working on the tower. No hook shot, no global, nobody fighting. And that means Alliance say, great, Rax are ours for the taking. Where's that song? Gotta go now. Here's the song. The setup is there, but will it be enough? Look for EGM to global immediately. Unwinding the Requiem. Perfectly timed once again. What a play. Hani, but it's just not enough damage. Lona bulldozing through him onto Trixie. And this could be a lot of trouble. Trixie probably going to fall here. There's still an Aegis up on S4. Three dead. Four dead with a buyback for the Crystal Maiden. This could be the end for Fnatic in the winner's bracket. GG. Fnatic knocked down to the loser's bracket in convincing fashion. Alliance 2-0. They'll play the winner of Navi versus Sigma tomorrow. Jeez, that was brutal. What a beatdown. Yeah. I mean, enter, enter like killer instinct mode from Alliance. My goodness. That was ridiculous, and they. This is what happens, I think, when they get like a, a better draft. To the silencer pick was. It just turned out. It, it worked out really well for them, especially considering their lineup. The Naga just got completely owned. They had a couple of songs that are initiates at the end, but it was just too little, too late. Yeah. What do you think Fnatic needs to do differently? Because I mean, we've talked about the Slark. Not pick Slark. I think is number one. What else? Uh, number two. They're, they're not getting Wisp. It seems like nobody's going to give it to them. I'd be surprised if anyone. I does. think they need to uh, expand Hani's hero pool in mid. Like S4 plays Shadow Shaman. He plays Puck. He plays a lot of tempo controller, but Hani doesn't tempo control. Not not on Shadow Fiend, at least. Right? He he stacked and he farmed, I think, a little bit too much. He yeah. got his BKB, but it just got destroyed. That lifestyle was way too big. Like He just right-clicked him through BKB. And once again, Ake. They should ban Lifestealer, too. Versus verse Alliance, it really does feel that way. So I think you ban Life Sealer. I think you give Hani a more active hero. Because Fnatic has a good early game. They, they had a, a really good first five to ten minutes in game one. And in game two, it was not it, it was decent, too, because they killed Loda. I'd like to see them draft more heroes that can transition into a push as well. I feel that really was costing them. Both games. Like, they, they get two, three kills. They, would do, they couldn't do anything with it. Couldn't even take a tower. Yeah. Uh, it's really... You want to listen to this interview? Uh, yeah, if that's possible, let's let's hear from Loda. Uh, I don't know if it's possible. Oh, we're gonna I don't know. I think that we played you can ask him. Can we well, hear from Loda? Uh, except me, I did a stupid initiate in the first game when I got picked off. But at that point, it didn't really matter so much anymore. The the tower went down to 200 HP, and we, we kind of knew that we we should have that game. So feels really good. And uh, will you stay here for second game, or you will go to a hotel and watch there? I think we'll stick around, maybe have a beer, enjoy ourselves in Kiev. Okay, thank you. Ну что ж, Лада сказал, что он в принципе доволен пиком Fnatic, потому что, ну, они пикнули хорошо. Well, he said he thought he only made like one big mistake. That was the time he got picked off on bottom without using rage. Yeah. It, they were so far ahead at that point that it like slightly mattered, but aside from that, he played really well. I mean, all of Alliance played really well. Like EGM, both games, the Wisp and the Silencer. S4, his Storm Spirit just found very, very good opportunities. Loda managing to find farm and get huge on Life Stealer in both of these games. EGM, fantastic Wisp play in game one, and the crowd giving a round of applause here for Alliance. I didn't feel like Fnatic's individual play was the problem at all. Like they executed. It Pretty well in most games. Wasn't. I yeah, thought the drafts, the drafts were really what hurt them. I think the first game, I thought the draft was good. Yeah. The, the first game was more execution. This game was definitely, it felt like the draft. Yeah, the Slark, the slark pick is just... Situational. It's not like it's always bad. Right. It's just, it doesn't... They rely them. on it too much. I think that they need to heed Bucky Mad's advice and say that he's overrated. Get, Go back get to another carry. Put Arrow on Life Stealer, you know. Like yeah, they, they should do they that. Could, they could be taken. And they, that's Arrow's hero. Yeah, they don't. They they don't need a ban Life Stealer. They just need to take it away from Loda and yeah. either use it themselves or just ban it out. But well, with that being said, guys, that's going to wrap up Alliance versus Fnatic. Alliance, they move on in the winners bracket. They wait the winner of Navi versus Sigma. That match coming up a bit later today. Uh, I think we have like an hour or two before it gets started. It's 8 p.m. local time. And what time is it now? Six. Okay, so it might be a two-hour break. I don't know if we'll start early. Yeah. Uh, but the loser, Fnatic, they're not out. They drop down. They wait the loser of Navi versus Sigma. So with that being said, guys, that concludes this best of three. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll return with your next match, which is going to be Navi versus Sigma, your final match of the evening.